Welcome to the Expert Series, brought to you by the Lupus Foundation of America. Our speaker today is Dr. George Sokos, Professor of Medicine at the Harvard Medical School and Chief of Rheumatology at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston. Dr. Sokos is widely recognized as one of the foremost leaders of modern lupus research, with landmark discoveries that have brought understanding of lupus to new levels, shedding new light on how the disease develops and progresses over time. He has published over 400 papers and has received numerous awards and honors recognizing his contributions to the field, including the Lupus Insight Prize and the Evelyn V. Hess Award for Lupus Research. Today, Dr. Sokos will be speaking about lupus and brain fog. I would now like to turn it over to Dr. Sokos and thank him for joining us. Thank you, Alisa. I'm glad to be with you today and discuss uh, a difficult clinical manifestation that people with lupus suffer, and that referred to as brain fog, which is a mild, mild form of a cognition disorder that many people with lupus suffer. Cognition, as you all know, includes the perception of external stimuli that we receive, processing information, learning new facts, storage in them, and expression. The whole thing, the, all these processes are known as brain health. Now, a very mild form of that, or a subclinical form of cognitive dysfunction in lupus would be known as fog that many people experience. And this may be manifested simply by slowing down the cognitive function, impaired working memory, that is the memory that's required at that particular moment, that particular hour, that particular day, to execute things, and more practically, difficulty with multitasking, organizing time and priorities, and planning. Thank you, Dr. Sokos. Next, can you tell us how frequent it is? It's difficult to evaluate because it's very difficult to define cognitive dysfunction. It looks like that the majority of people with lupus experience cognitive dysfunction, and more importantly, more frequently, what we refer today as fogginess of the brain. Thank you, Dr. Sokos. Now, can you tell us a little bit more about how lupus brain fog is diagnosed? Not having exact and accurate simple criteria, it is difficult to pinpoint a diagnosis in somebody who just doesn't feel very well. Most of uh, the simple tests have not proven to have sufficient sensitivity and specificity, and self-report instruments have been validated by some people but not by others. Ideally, if there is a problem that limits the person with lupus, it would be nice if the doctor would perform formal testing and define exactly cognitive impairment. This needs to be done repeatedly over time to document it. Thank you, Dr. Sokos. Is there a way to measure its severity? Again, a difficult problem. And as I mentioned, performing formal cognitive tests over time, it's the best way to approach it. As I said, it's quite frequent and most of the people would experience that. Now, we all know, and we all are upset, what is usually talked about, it is in the people's head, people, I mean, people with lupus, and it is not. There's real pathology behind that. Thank you, Dr. Sokos. Could you explain more about the pathology behind brain fog? Although we know little about what causes cognitive impairment in patients with lupus. We know that in some people, certain processes are going on, and these are responsible for the impairment. One of them was taught to us by Bruce Volpe and Betty Diamond, and it has to do with some of the most famous uh, autoantibodies, the anti-DNA antibodies, which may get into the brain, and for some reason, they cross-react with receptors in the brain that are very important for their function, and that can cause malfunction of the neurons. 
Another pathology was taught to us recently by Alison Bialas and Mike Carroll from Harvard, where they claimed that interferon may enter the brain and activate microglial cells, one of the main cells in the brain, which in turn chew up neuronal synapses. And it's obvious that with fewer synapses, bad things are happening at the cognitive department. Another also very interesting pathology that's going on and has not been discussed sufficiently is uh, inability of red cells from people with lupus to enter the tissues, the brain in our case, and exchange gases, that is to deliver oxygen. And that is because red cells are coated with uh, complement fragments. You know, complement is a system of proteins that is typically consumed in people with lupus and is used as a marker of disease activity. When it's broken down, some of the fragments stick on the cell surface of red cells, and then these cells cannot deliver oxygen. With all these mechanisms and many more, it is never in the head of the person with lupus who complains. It's a real pathology and it's the inability of us physicians to put our finger on what is going on and what exactly is causing the fogginess and impairment in cognitive function. Thank you, Dr. Sokos. So now just moving on to our last point, can you tell us more about treatment and how someone with lupus who is experiencing brain fog can work with their doctor? So it is important to work with the doctor to perform a number of tests which will help clarify the mechanism which would underlie impairment. The doctor may want to look for markers of disease activity, look for the presence of autoantibodies, or look for complement activation because, as I mentioned, when activated, fragments stick on the cell surface membrane of red cells and limits their function, their ability to exchange oxygen. Sometimes the doctors will use symptomatic treatment approaches, like use anxiolytics, psychotropics, or anticonvulsants, and try to help the patient. Or the doctor may need to fine-tune disease control. I hope that pretty soon we'll learn more and we'll be able to say for every single person, this is what causes fogginess in you, and then develop treatment strategy or give medications, I think, in reverse the pathology. As you all know, the field of lupus is quite cloudy in terms of understanding and our ability to be effective in delivering proper care to, to people who suffer. When the brain is involved, I would say it's not cloudy, it's heavily overcast. And with that, I want to thank you for your attention and I hope my comments have helped you understand better. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sokos, for joining us today. We really, really appreciate all of the information that you shared about brain fog and lupus. And for those listening in, we invite you to check out next month's presentation on men and lupus. If you would like to learn more about living well with lupus, you can find additional resources on the National Resource Center for Lupus, or you can call one of our health educators at 1-800-558-0121. Or if you would like to connect with others who are impacted by lupus, check out our online community, Lupus Connect, where you can talk with others, find emotional support, and discuss practical insights for coping with the daily challenges of lupus. Thank you and have a wonderful day.